teaching, preaching I'm going to be giving this morning. Uh, something needs to be laid out and talked about. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to be there at verse 1. You know, two or three Sundays ago, before we had the baptisms, I preached a sermon on what baptism is and is not. And I tried to lay it out, the biblical truth about baptism. Now this morning, the Lord laid it on my heart, and I'll tell you later on in the sermon why He laid it on my heart maybe, but the Lord laid it on my heart to preach on what the gospel is and what the gospel is not. What the gospel is and what the gospel isn't. And that's what I want to preach on this morning. What is the gospel? What is the gospel message? What is the gospel? Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First, first verse there, 1 Corinthians 15. Look at the first verse there, verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, this is Paul and he's writing here. Paul's writing to the church. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached unto you. Here it is which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, but which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Unless all of it is vain. Of course, we know it's not. Look at verse 3, though. Here's the gospel. For I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried... And he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the Gospel. Now he's going to go on there in verses 5, 6. He's going to go on there to talk about the different people who have seen Jesus Christ that testify they've seen him, Jesus Christ as the resurrected Savior. But the Gospel is, the Gospel simply is Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, was buried, rose again according to the Scriptures the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the Gospel, the death the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you humbly in the precious name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And Father, as I uh, preach on the gospel, Lord God, I pray, Father, it be your words, not mine, Lord. I pray, Father, you hide me behind the cross. But Lord, I pray you make it evident, make it real to us, Lord. I pray, Father, you, you straighten out some of these... Uh, these uh, uh, problems we might have in our mind, Lord God, uh, what it really is, Lord, and help us to understand it with a clear mind, Lord. Give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And Lord, I know you said in your word, Lord, that the truth will set us free, Father. And I do know, Lord, if there is somebody, if there's somebody underneath the sound of my voice that doesn't know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, as we give the invitation at the end of this message, Lord God, as we give the gospel through this message, through this sermon, Lord God, that they'll see the need they have, Lord God, they need the, ha the need they have to have their sins forgiven, and they'll come on down here and get saved. And I'm praying all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What is the gospel? Well, the gospel simply is, according to verse 3, that Christ died for our sins, he went, verse 4, he was buried, and then he rose again the third day. What's the gospel mean? Gospel simply means, that word gospel simply means good news. Good news. There's good news. What's the good news? Well, the good news, according to Scripture, is Christ died for your sins. We're all sinners in here. We're all sinners in here. And the good news is Christ died for those sins. Now, the bad news is, as a sinner, you one day are going to die. Every man's, appointed unto, to, to, uh, every man's appointed unto death and then the judgment. You're all appointed to die and then to stand before God in judgment. So you want to have those sins took care of. You don't want to stand before God and all your sins and God start judging you for all your sins because the gospel is, the good news isn't that you're on one side and then all your, all your good works are on one side and all your bad works are on another side and God's going to judge you if you've been good enough or bad enough and you get to go to heaven if you've been good. If you've been a bad boy, you've got to go to hell. That's not the good news. That's nowhere in the Bible. The gospel is, and Paul's lined it out, it's very clear, it's very plain. Christ died for your sins, he was buried, he rose again the third day. Now, what do you have to do to get saved? Well, you've got to believe and you've got to receive. Notice that verse, go back up to verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received. See, this gospel is good news. Christ died for your sins. It's a free gift given to you, according to Romans chapter 6. It's a free gift of eternal life that's given to you, but a gift can be offered and not received. Somebody can offer you something, so I don't want to take that. 
And Christ has died for your sins. He's offering you this free gift of salvation. All your sins can be covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He's sacrificed on the, on the cross for you. And He's offering you this free gift, but you've got to receive it. And He says right there, you have received. And then verse 2, it says, I have preached unto you unless you have believed in vain. It's a belief. It's a receive. It's you believe it, and then you receive it, and then you're saved. The good news is that Christ died for your sins. This is the gospel. Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. You need to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you'll get saved. That's the gospel. That's the good news, and that's exactly what Paul preached. Now go to first, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 1. Now I'm going to turn to some scripture this morning because I'm going to line some stuff out because there's been some people that have gotten this stuff wrong and some people have gotten it right, amen, but we're going to make sure we get it right this morning. And the way you're going to get it right is by sticking with the book. According to the Scriptures, according to the Scriptures. Remember what he said, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. It's all about the Word of God. It's not about what the pastor says or the preacher says or what the church says or what the, uh, uh, some kind of religious system says. It's like, what saith the Lord? What does the Bible say? And the Bible says it's the, the Gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, now skip down to verse 12. All this is good. The whole, the whole chapter, the whole book of Ephesians is, is really incredible. But look at verse 12, and he's going to line it out again. He's going to line it out again, the gospel and how you got saved. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12. That we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. See that trust? Now he's going to line it out. Verse 13. Whom ye also trusted... When did you trust? After that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He lines it out exactly the process of your salvation. First, what happens? First, according to verse 13, you, you, you hear the word of God. You hear the word of truth. See that? And on, verse 13, go with it, with, go here with me. Verse 13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. You trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believe. There's a process going on there. The belief, first off, you've got to hear the word of truth. Somebody's got to tell you that Christ died for your sins. And that he was buried and that he was resurrected on the third day. That's the, that's the truth, right? So you hear that. What does Romans chapter 10 tell us? Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Somebody tells you what the scriptures... Remember what, according to the scriptures. The scriptures say Christ died for our sins. He was buried and on the third day he came up. You believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. You believe that. You hear that first. And then what happens next? Next, you hear that and then you believe it. In whom also after that ye believed. See that verse 13? In whom also after that ye believed. First you hear the word of truth. Then you believe that Jesus Christ did die for your sins. What happens after that? Then you trusted it. You received it. Trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So there's a hearing of the word. You hear a preacher, you hear a teacher, you hear a Sunday school teacher, maybe you hear a friend or a loved one, a, 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 somebody, a family member say, Jesus Christ, you're a sinner, and Jesus Christ died for your sins. This is all Bible, according to Scripture. He was buried, and on the third day he rose again. You, do you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? In other words, do you believe that he died for your sins? You say, yes, I believe that. Well, do you want to trust it? And then you pray and ask Jesus Christ to save you. And you're saved. And what happens after all of that? Look at the end of verse 13. Ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit comes into you and seals you. And you're saved in what we call being born again. And we'll get into that in a minute. You're born again right there. You're sealed. The Holy Spirit takes care of you. Boom. You're sealed. And where, how, how long are you sealed? Turn to chapter 4. Turn to chapter 4 of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit. God puts a seal on you. Nobody can break that seal but God. The devil can't break that seal. Your sins can't break that seal. You're sealed when? Verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. 
And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Praise God, He's put a seal on you. It's like a, it's like he's like a can of preserves. You're preserved according to first, but you're preserved unto the, to, re, to to heaven. You're preserved. You're sealed. He sealed you up. You're, you you don't have to worry about your salvation. And that's the good news is that he died for your sins. If you'll trust in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, he'll save you. And he'll not only save you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit of promise, and he'll keep you. Amen. That's good news. I mean, that's really good news. That's called the gospel. That's what the gospel is. The gospel is good news. That's why it shouldn't be any problem for you to tell somebody the good news of Jesus Christ, right? Because you're not selling them a bill of goods. You know, uh, I had this, I bought, I bought recently, I bought a truck. I bought it off this uh, car, a used car salesman. Ooh, that dude, ooh, a used car salesman. I got the truck home. I didn't have, I had less than six months. Engine blows on me. I called the guy up, and he says, you got one week to get it down here, and we'll fix it. And they did. I took it down there, and they fixed it. Well, then there was all kinds of trouble happening. I, I called, uh, two months later, I called, the back, I called the guy up. He goes, he answers the phone. He said, I don't even work for them anymore. What do you do in answering the phone if you don't work for me? He goes, well, I, I care about you. I care that you, I'm going to take care of you. I want to make sure you're took care of. And that made a big impression on me that somebody... He, that he cared. My point is, is that once I bought that truck, I was like, I'm done. It, 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 the engine falls apart. It's not his fault. It's not the dealership's fault. That's not what salvation is about. The good news is, once you get this, it's yours forever. It, it's going to keep, God's going to keep it. You're not going to lose it. You don't have to worry about it wearing out. You don't have to worry about, oh, my sins are going to wear out that grace and I'll run out of grace. You don't run out of God's grace. It isn't some kind of extended warranty that after six months you're, it's over. No, this is lasts forever. This is, this is eternal life. This is everlasting life. Praise God for that. That's the good news of the gospel. Now, to turn to Ephesians 2. Let me show you what the gospel is. In. Ephesians chapter 2. Now, let's get into some of what the gospel is not. Gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You must believe it and you must receive it. Here's what the gospel is not. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. The gospel is not. Here's what the gospel is not. For by grace are you saved through faith. There's that faith. What faith? That faith that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and He rose again on the third day. That's what you're putting your faith in. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. There's what I was talking about. God gives you this gift. It's a gift of God. It's not of yourselves. It's not something you're going to do. The gospel's not anything you can do to get saved. It's nothing you're going to be able to do to make yourself right with God, to cover your sins. There's nothing you can do. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the gospel is not associated at all with any kind of work you can do. So if anybody ever tries to give you any kind of gospel, and what I mean by gospel, a way to get saved, anybody gives you any kind of good news, say, I'm going to show you how you can come to God. And any time they tell you any of that involves any kind of work, that's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. Because the gospel has no works involved. Not, you read it with me. Not a works. You're not going to work your way to, the good, to, to getting yourself right with God. The only way you're going to get yourself right with God is to believe and receive that Christ died for your sins, He was buried, and on the third day He rose again. That's the gospel. The gospel is not, well, I've got to keep on working to do You don't work to get it, and you don't work to keep it. You don't, go, you don't work to get saved, and you don't work to stay saved. Boy, it's quiet in here. Amen, brother. You don't work to get saved. Listen to me. If it's works, what Paul says later on in Romans, he says, if it's works, then it's no more grace. That's a gift. A, if, it's, if, if you have to work for it, it's not a gift. Amen. Let, I heard this old preacher, Brother Tut, used to tell this illustration. Good illustration. If I showed up at your house and I bring in a brand new truck to you, and go, hey, I'm going to give you a brand new truck. And you're like, praise God, that pastor, I have the best pastor in Texas. He just gave me a brand new, you'd be calling all your friends how wonderful I am and how great a pastor.
I am. He just gave me a brand new truck. And then a month later, you get the first payment in. <laughs> Not so much grace anymore, is it? Not so much a gift anymore, is it? Why are you trying to do that to God? I'm going to work, Lord. I'm going to work. God says, all your righteousness is, is, is filthy rags in the sight of the Lord. You're filthy. You're no good. You're dirty. Guys, we all have, most of us have kids in here. Remember when you had your little kid, and they come in, and they got mud all over them, and you say, hey, go clean yourself up in the bathroom, and then you go back in there 30 minutes later, and they're dirtier than they were before you went in there. Now all the bathroom's dirty. That's you. You can't clean yourself up. You're not going to clean yourself. Not a works list. Any man should boast. God doesn't want you to go to heaven and start boasting. Well, I did this for God, and I did that for God. And this is why I own this mansion right here. I built this mansion from earth. I started doing this work and that work. God says, no, you're not going to boast about it. You're going to always look at Jesus Christ and thank him. Christ died for my sins. I didn't do nothing for myself. Christ did it. Jesus Christ did it. He's king of kings and lord of lords. I'm just a lowly servant. I'm coming in because of what Christ did. He died for my sins. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose again. That's the gospel. That's the good news. It's not of works. You see, it's not of works. Turn to Galatians chapter 1. Turn to the left. The gospel is not of works. Man, there's so many people try to tie works to the gospel. And that work includes baptism. If you have to get baptized, that's a work. Any kind of work, it's no, there's no works involved in salvation. You're either taking Jesus Christ or you've not took Jesus Christ. I received Him as my Lord and Savior. I believe that He died for my sins. I received Him. I prayed and asked Him to save me. He saved me. Have I been a good Christian? Not really. Maybe I've done some stuff. There's maybe some stuff I've done. Maybe other Christians have done. I've done some bad stuff. Good, bad Christians haven't done. The point is, the reason I'm saved is because of Jesus Christ. And the reason I'm kept is because of Jesus Christ. If you had to trust your works to get to heaven, everyone in this room is going to be going to hell. I'm not trying to step on your toes. I'm trying to step all over your feet, legs, and everything. You're not going to work your way into heaven, guys. Get that out of your head. And anybody who thinks that is self-righteous. It's self-right. They're trying, Paul describes it as they're trying to go about establishing their own righteousness. I'm so good. And Paul says, and they're not, they've not going back to the right, they don't understand the righteousness of God, which is Jesus Christ. You're right with God because Jesus Christ is right with God. Now, I'm not going to get into the old process of justification and sanctification and everything that goes on, in, that goes on during that salvation process and the, what happened at the cross, but simply, all you need to know simply, because the gospel is a very simple message. You've got to believe Christ died for your sins. I'm a sinner. Christ died for my sins. He was buried and He rose again on the third day. The gospel is so simple and good, but it's not this. Look at Galatians chapter 1. Here's something else the gospel is not. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, unto another gospel. Now, the grace of Christ, see, the gospel is what? It's you're saved by grace through faith, right? Not of works. But he says if somebody's coming in, guys, in Galatia, that's come in and starting to preach another gospel. Is there another gospel? Look at verse 7. Which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. I'm here to tell you there's only one gospel. There's not other gospels. There's only one gospel. The gospel I give you, that Paul gave you in 1 Corinthians 15, the gospel for us today is simply what? I'm going to say it another time and another time and another time. Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again on the third day. There's not another gospel than that. But there's somebody coming in with another gospel. Look at verse 8. But though we, and that includes Paul and all the apostles, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Paul says if an angel from heaven shows up on your front door and is glorified, shining bright, and preaches to you another gospel... Paul says, let that angel be accursed. Paul says, if I show up at your door, knock on your door. Paul says, if I show up, knock on your door, and try to give you another gospel other than the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, let me be accursed. 
There is no other gospel. So what you got to understand is, if somebody comes to you and says, well, there's many ways to God. That's straight out of hell. There's not many ways to God. There's only one true gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you all to meditate on this. If there's many ways to God, and the gospel is what? Christ died for your sins. Amen? Did Muhammad die for your sins? Did Buddha die for your sins? No. Did the Pope die for your sins? No. Did this preacher right here, did Brother Keegan die for your sins? No. Did the General Baptist Convention die for your sins? No. Did the Methodist Church die for your sins? No. Who died for your sins? Christ. There's only one way to God. Jesus Christ says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. You know why? He's the only one that's going to die for your sins. And I'm here to tell you, if you know the Bible and you know God, He's the only one that could die for your sins. He's the only one that's half man and half God. He's the Son of Man and He's the Son of God. He's God manifest in the flesh. He's the only one that could die for your sins. There's not another gospel. It says that though we are an angel, do you understand that? Muhammad claims that a, uh, I, think he, I think this angel Gabriel that came to, get, came to Muhammad had like 600 wings or something like that. But uh, no, that doesn't matter the fact that the fact is, is that Muhammad claims that the angel Gabriel came and gave him the book of, Mor uh, the book of the Muhammad. It gave him the, the, uh, the Quran, gave him all the, the teachings of Muhammad. He says an angel gave that to him. An angel might have gave that to him. An angel of the devil. It's another gospel. You understand that uh, Joseph Smith, the, the founder of the Mormon religion, the Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints, he claims that Angel Moroni came and gave him these ten tablets, and that's where he gets another testament, the Book of Mormon. That's where he gets his Book of Mormon, which should be called not the Book of Mormon, but not, and they call that Book of Mormon another testament. But really it should be called another gospel. That's, what you get. that's why they don't call it another gospel. Because you would be obvious to you that you say, that's just something that should be accursed. There's only one gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 9, as we said before, and he, he's going to close it out by saying this, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel to you that ye have received, let him be accursed. It's only one gospel. Only one true gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, here's where people fall off the rails. This is where the confusion comes in. When I say there's only one gospel, there's only one true gospel, that, that everything I'm saying is accurate. We know that to be biblically true. But there's more than one gospel in the Bible. Just like I taught you a couple of Sundays ago that there's more than one baptism and that confuses people. People try to confuse the baptisms. There's more than one gospel that was being preached and people go and they see that gospel and they think, well, that's a gospel for us and it's not a gospel for us. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Studies show that stuff approved. You got to dispensationally, you got to break this stuff down. There's different gospels. You know what Adam and Eve's gospel was? Don't touch the tree. Don't trust the tree. If you touch that tree, you'll die. I mean, I said touch, eat. Don't eat of the tree or you'll die. That was the news that God gave Adam and Eve. He doesn't give that news to you. He doesn't tell anybody in this room not to touch any tree that I know of. Do you see how there's different time periods? Now, you got to understand this. Turn to Matthew chapter 4. I'll show this to you. There are different, there aren't di there are different gospels. But that's not the gospel for us. And it's real obvious when you study it out. What the problem is, people don't want to study their Bible. What they want to do is they want to open up their Bible, they want to read one or two verses and think they have it figured out. It don't work that way. And people get, that's how people get so messed up. They want to see some verse they've seen on Facebook and think, okay, that solves all my problems. You got to study to show that self approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to study. No Christian wants to study today. No Christian likes studying today. Every Christian in this room, they don't want to study. They want to watch TV or watch what's going on on the, on the Internet or go through Twitter or Facebook. or They want to do anything but open up the Bible and read it and study it. It's hard enough to get y'all just to open it and read it. 
can't imagine trying to hammer y'all to study it. But you understand if you study it, you won't get fooled by this stuff. And that's what we're doing this morning is I'm going to show you this study, a real quick study. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. The gospel is not this gospel you found in Matthew chapter 4. verse. This is Jesus Christ. From that time, Jesus began to preach. This is the gospel he preached. And he said to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the gospel is not the kingdom of heaven's at hand. I don't ever preach the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Now I preach that Jesus Christ is about to come back. What the kingdom of heaven is, the kingdom of, there's a there's a difference. You've got to grab a hold of this. This goes back to studying. There's a kingdom of heaven and there's a kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom that Christ preached. A physical kingdom that's going to come from heaven. It's going to sit on this earth and rule and reign on this earth. It'll be a millennial kingdom. That's a kingdom of heaven. That's Jesus Christ ruling on this earth as a king from Jerusalem. That's the kingdom of heaven. Now the kingdom of God you'll be mentioned. Paul says that's, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's a spiritual kingdom. So the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. That's the kingdom of everybody in this room. If you're a born again believer in this room, you're saved, you're part of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom. That's going to take place in the millennial kingdom. So when Christ came in the book of Matthew, he comes as the king of the Jews. Hey, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, I've come. I'm about to be a king for you guys. What did they do with their king? Crucified him, right? Now look at verse 5. I mean chapter 5. Look at chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. So Christ came preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then in chapter 5, you've got to study this stuff out. In chapter 5, he starts giving what we would call the constitution of his kingdom. Like in his kingdom, this is what's going on. Look at verse 1. And seeing the multitude, he went up onto a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Is that good news? That's not good news for anybody in this room. Blessed, look at that verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Do the meek inherit the earth right now? No. If you're meek, you get run on, stomped on, and they plow you over. It's the bold that, get, it's the bold that inherit the earth right now, right? It's the cheaters and the crooks. It's the Bill Gates of the world. It's the crooks. It's the cheaters. It's all these. They're the ones that are winning. They're the ones that are inheriting the earth. The meek people, the people that try to do right, they're stomping on us right now. But in Jesus Christ's kingdom, the meek will inherit the earth. Do you understand that? So what I'm trying to say, you, what I'm trying to say to you, when you read Matthew chapter five and you start seeing turn, turning the other cheek is not the gospel. Turning the other cheek is not the gospel. Loving your enemy is not the gospel. That's not the gospel. That's for us to, as Christians to follow, to follow our Savior as a disciple. But that's not the gospel. What is the gospel? Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. The God, those are not, that's not going to save you. You can turn your cheek all you want to. And you're still going to go to hell if you don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. It's not keeping the Ten Commandments. It's not keeping the Sermon on the Mount. You, you, are you getting this yet? I hope so. Matthew chapter 10. Look at Matthew chapter 10. Jesus came in as a king. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. Jesus came in as a king, and he was presenting himself as the king. Now, some of y'all, have, maybe you haven't studied your Bible enough to know this, but you won't find the gospel in the book of Matthew. Look for it. Study it. You're going to have a hard time because as Jesus present himself to the Jews as a king. I'm a king. Here's, and I'm going to do all these things to prove to you that I'm the son of God and I'm a king. I'm a king. I'm a king. And they rejected their king. They said, we have no king but Caesar. Kill and crucify him. And they crucified their Messiah. Praise God they did it. We wouldn't have got in on it. But God knew, God knew in His foreknowledge that they would do that. But He had promised to send them a king. And they rejected their king. So Matthew chapter 10, that's what He's doing here in Matthew chapter... Look at verse 5. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. So as you study through the book of Matthew, 
These twelve Jesus sent forth, he's talking about the twelve disciples, sent forth, commanded them, saying, Go not in the world of the Gentiles, and, and, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. So when he sends them to preach, he says, Don't go to the Gentiles, which is everybody in this room. The Samaritans are half Jew, half Gentile. He says, Don't go unto them. But go what? Verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's preaching to the sheep of Israel. He's not preaching to us or anybody else. This is not a message for the entire world. This is just for Israel. And what's that message he's preaching? Verse 7. As ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Your Jewish Messiah, the king, has come. He's come, to, he's come in to set up his kingdom. Will you receive it? And they said, we don't want him. And he died on the cross for the sins of the world. Praise God. So I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters, don't go to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6 and say, man, if I just keep that stuff, I'll get saved. That's not what the gospel is. That's, that's not the gospel. Now that was what was preached at the time by Jesus Christ, but that's not the gospel. The gospel is what? The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. This has taken place before before what? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's different time periods. There's different ages. You can go into Revelation and there's an angel in heaven preaching the everlasting gospel in Revelation 14. That's not your gospel. That's another gospel for another time. But for this time right here, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's how you're going to get saved. That's what the gospel is, and that right there is what the gospel is not. Turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Boy, this is going to be a long sermon if I don't hurry up. <laughs> John chapter 3. I'm running, a little, I'm running on time, but we're going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going to hammer it. We're going to stomp this stuff out. John chapter 3. What is the gospel? The gospel is now. I'm going to show you what the gospel is. I showed you what the gospel is not. Look at John chapter 3. Verse 6, the gospel is believing in Jesus Christ. Believing in Jesus Christ. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The gospel is believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins, he was buried and rose again the third day, and you will be born again. You must. You must believe to be born again. Now skip down to verse 14. I'll show you that. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's obviously a reference to the crucifixion. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's an everlasting life. That's the eternal life. That's that believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. See, that's a belief that Jesus Christ is going on about. Look at verse 17. Why did Jesus come? For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. How's the world going to get saved? By believing in the death, of the, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross for your sins, that he was buried and he rose again the third day. Look at verse 18. He that believeth, believeth on him is not condemned. You're going to heaven. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You either can believe in the death, burial, and resurrection and not be condemned, or you cannot believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you're condemned already. You're already going to hell. Why? Because you're going to have to pay for your sins. If you don't want to have to stand before God and pay for all the sins that you've done, you better get into Jesus Christ and believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He'll give you that, he'll give you that gift. And I've already read it to you. He'll give you that gift. By grace, it's a free gift. You don't earn it. Grace just means it's a gift given to you, but that's not earned. Usually it'll give you a free gift. Here you go. Why does God do that? Because He loves you. For God so loved the world that He gave. You see that in verse 16? That's why He does that. Don't make no sense to me or you, does it? He'd love a bunch of old rotten sinners. That's good news. Amen. Good news that He loves sinners. He's not waiting for you to do some kind of work that you can't do. 
He's not waiting for you to go to church a hundred times. Once you get to church, go to church a hundred times. Then you get to go to heaven. It don't work that way. If you give a thousand dollars to the church, you get to go to heaven. Thank God it don't work that way. Half of us will go to hell, amen. Once you feed so many poor people, you get to go to heaven. That's a work. It don't work that way. It's grace. It's a gift. It's not a works. It's believing and receiving the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Turn to Romans chapter 12. And this is the whole reason I preach this sermon. Romans chapter 12 right here. I'll tell you why. Romans chapter 12. Okay, here's why I preach, I'm preaching this. One of the reasons. The Lord laid it on my heart, but one of the reasons. Man, if I do that, then I could talk about this. I'll do that. Thank you, Lord. So, Sister Shirley, which wasn't able to make it to church this morning. She innocently, Sister Shirley. Well, you turn to Romans chapter 12 and read this to you. Sister Shirley innocently posted this up on Facebook. And it's a meme. And this up on Facebook, this meme says, Many will miss heaven by 18 inches. The distance from their head to their heart. They know about Christ, but do not know Him. Everybody knows about Jesus Christ, but they don't know that He died for their sins. He was buried, and He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. See, there's a difference, and they haven't received Him. They know about Christ, but do not know Him. You can be religious, but lost. You can have the Bible in your head, but have, not have Christ in your heart. I don't see a whole lot wrong with that, personally. The world needs more of that. Well, somebody on Facebook had to comment. Don't they always have to comment? This is why Brother King is not on Facebook. You ever hear me say, I'm not on Facebook. If I was on Facebook, I'd, I'd already have like 14 heart procedures. And I'd probably, I'd, I would, I'd come up here just raving, make the foaming at the mouth like a mad, rabid dog. I'd be so mad at it. Because this idiot, I, uh, Lord knows my heart. I don't mean that. This friend, or whoever it was, might be a good friend. I don't mean that. I really don't. Because I don't know this person. But they commented on that. Sorry, Shirley, but this is a false gospel. We are changed by the renewing of our mind. We're changed by the renewing of our mind. Scripture says nothing about asking Jesus in our heart. Romans 8 is clear. So you, what you have here is you have what happens all over Facebook that gets me so stirred up. You have these Facebook scholars... <laughs> They think they're going to teach somebody about the Bible. That's why I can't be on Facebook, because I would go absolutely nuts. Look at what he's, what he's talking about. It's Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. He says there that you're, we, that's a false gospel. He says we are changed by the renewing of our mind. Here's verse 2. Be, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That renewing of that mind, according to verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that's for Christians. That renewing of the mind happens, that's a, after you're saved, there's a sanctification process, there's a separation process, there's a process God starts working on your heart. Once you're saved, you're saved, God's going to start working on you because now you're a child of God. He's going to start trying to mature you in the Lord. And through the Holy Spirit, He's going to renew your mind. He's going to give you that perfect will, acceptable, good will of God. He's going to do things. That has nothing to do with the gospel. That's after the gospel. Renewing of your mind is the sanctification process, not the gospel. What is the gospel? Christ died for your sins. He's buried and rose again the third day. That's how you're saved. Now, all of that, that's how you're sanctified. That's how you're set apart. That's how God works in your life. You're still going to heaven if you renew your mind or you don't. And then he says, Romans 8 is very clear. Now, Romans 8, we don't have time. We're right on the time. But Romans chapter 8, what Romans chapter 8, go home and read it. That's the condemnation of fleshly living. Romans chapter 8 is just talking about, and go home and read it. Romans chapter 8 is just talking about, hey, you're a Christian. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, right? We read that, right? So the Holy Spirit's living in you, Christian. So if you're going to live in the flesh and not live in the Spirit, you better be ready. You're going to be condemned. Not condemned to hell, but your, your body's going to be condemned. You're going you're to be uh, condemned inside the Lord. The Lord's going to judge you. He's going uh, to hurt you. What I mean by hurt you, He's going to maybe bring some stuff onto you in your life. You're still saved, but living in this world, living in this flesh, if you're going to live in the flesh and not walk in the Spirit, there's some bad days coming. But you're still saved. You've got to understand that. Because that's not the gospel. That's called Christian living. 
That's called, all of a sudden you're born again, amen, and now you're part of the family of God. And where God used to leave you alone for things you used to do because you weren't His, now you're His. So guess what? The Father's going to pull His belt off and whip you because you belong to Him. Because His child don't do that. The devil's children do that, but now you belong to me, we don't do that. We don't act that way, we don't live that way. And if you live that way and act that way and walk in the flesh, you can expect it to get your little tiny whipped. It's not very hard to, con to conceive when you understand he's a father and you're a child, but that's not the gospel. Turn to Romans chapter 10. The gospel's not renewing your mind. I want to get that straight out. The gospel's not renewing your mind. Renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Here's the gospel. Paul gives it out. Lays it out. I mean, it's as plain as day in the same book he's talking about. Romans. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And we're closing up, guys. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou should confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now I want to point something out to you. In, in the middle of verse 9 it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that's a, asking Jesus to save you. That's saying, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I know you died for my sins. Will you save me? That's a confession. That's asking the Lord to save you. And look at this. And shalt believe. There's that belief that Jesus talked about, that Paul talked about, and he's talking about it again. Believe where? In the mind that God... No! It don't say mind, does it? It says in the heart. The problem's with your heart. It's always been with your heart. It's always going to be with your heart. It's a heart problem, not a mind problem. Everybody knows about Jesus, but they don't believe in their heart about Jesus, that he died for their sins, that he was buried, and he rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. If Paul, who just two chapters before used the word mind through the Holy Spirit, if Paul wanted to use the word mind, he already used it two chapters before, amen? He could have said, he could have put mind in there. But did he put mind in there or did he put heart? Heart. My point is, is this. The new, your mind has nothing to do with salvation. Your heart is part of your salvation. Jesus Christ says you believe, believe, believe. Guys, that belief is in your heart. It's not in your mind. See, your mind, your mind is what's going to drive you from God. Your knowledge is going to get, your knowledge that man tries to give you, it's going to try to drive you away from, from, from God. And the reason why a man does all this and believes stuff, they believe some of the kookiest stuff you ever could imagine in your life just to get away from God. Y'all know who Dawkins is, the leading atheist? Dawkins, when they asked him about creation and where creation come from, and they asked him about creation, and, he, and, they, and they said, where did, where, where did life come from? Because, see, science can't explain where life began. Where did life begin? Like, where did it begin? Not, we, I mean, you can say it came from a rock, and we, but where did that come from? Because you, you can't get life from a rock. What, and you know what Dawkins said? One of the leading scientists, one of the leading minds of our generation, you know what he said? Well, maybe aliens came down and planted it here. It's like little green men. And even a th person in third grade would say, that doesn't answer the question, where do the aliens come from? You're just putting it off. You're putting it off. Why does he, be, why does he think something stupid like that? Because he doesn't in his heart want to believe God. Why would a man not want in his heart to believe God? Because he knows in his heart he's going to be judged for who he is which is a sinner. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What is the gospel? The good news is, Christ died for our sins, and that's your sins too, according to Scripture. He was buried and he rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. If you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you want to put your faith in Him and say, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I want, to, I, want, I want you to pay for my sins. Will you pay? When you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and put your faith and trust in that, you will be saved. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy, Lord. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for that gospel simple. Lord, it's not confusion, confusing, Lord God. It's not the Ten Commandments. It's not 